Are you ready to learn about the most basic and primitive form of communication and why it's so important for us as humans? Are you curious about intentional touch, meaning how do you create safety for yourself and others when you're doing handshakes or hugs or communicating? Some of the playful research that was developed to show how our brain actually responds under stress when we're holding a stranger's hand, holding the hand of someone that we know and care about or nobody's hands at all, because these all make a difference to our body and to our minds. Isn't this amazing? So right after the show reel, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> you can't too much. Touch is the most basic and primitive form of communication. And by its very nature, it's got a lot of emotionality to it. There is no sensation without emotion attached. In fact, our sense of touch is created by a bunch of our sensors in our body. Our sense of touch is created by many sensors working in parallel. So when somebody touches us, the nerve signals are processed by two systems in the brain. So the first is the somatosensory cortex, and this processes the facts, like where am I being touched? On my shoulder, on my hand, on my back? What's the pressure? How intensely? The second part of the brain that responds is called the insula, which is part of our emotional touch system. In other words, the part that's interpreting what we're feeling. So our brain's going, hmm, what is the intention of this touch? Now, this is where we can start making up stories about what touch means. First of all, let's talk about intention is always important, as well as communication when we're doing any kind of touch. That changes cross-culturally. It changes between men and women. Often, I know in America, North America, and a lot of European societies, that touch is perceived as sexual if it's between male and female, because we're naturally brought up to believe that. We can start to recognize what kinds of touch are linked to particular emotions or sensations in our own body. When we start realizing this, it brings such a sense of clarity. For example, if someone touches you really gently, you may interpret it as more compassionate than if they had used firm contact, or you may interpret it as more sexual based upon your history and what you believe about touch than the person touching you. Understanding where you came from, what you learned about any kind of physical contact is really important to understand how our brain how our insula is interpreting this information. One of the most interesting things about touch as well, though, in my opinion, is that touch really can create a sense of safety. Now we know that oxytocin release is released when we have healthy physical contact, and that helps us feel connected. It increases bonding. It makes us feel more trusted and more trustworthy. It also can create a sense of safety that becomes stronger when we're connected to each other. For example, they did a research study where 16 married women were put into an fMRI, fMRI machine and their brains were studied while they were under threat of electric shot. They were evaluated three different times in three different ways. Number one, while holding their husband's hand. Number two, while holding a male stranger's hand. And number three, holding no hand at all. The brain responded less to the threat of shock when they were holding a stranger's hand than no hand at all, and even less when holding their husband's hand. And the stronger the marital relationship, the less the threat was detected. So you can look on YouTube, Dr. James Cohen, who was one of the researchers in the, in the study, um, I believe his TED Talk was done in 2013. He said when they look at what the brain's doing, when the shock's directed to a friend or a romantic partner, the stress patterns in the brain look really similar to the pattern in self. Now, our brain is also really good at understanding different types of touch based upon our culture and our intention. Another study was done where, in where there was a barrier that was placed between two people that didn't know each other. And person A was instructed to attempt to communicate a certain type of emotion out of a list through a one second touch to the person on the other side of the barrier. 
And in an article by Dachner Kelter, who was one of the researchers, what he said is the odds of guessing the right emotion by chance were 8%. Yet participants guessed compassion correctly 60% of the time. Gratitude, anger, love, and fear were also picked up more than 50% of the time. Some emotions are easier or more easily accessible to the brain to pick up, which is fascinating, isn't it? And even more, research out of Carnegie Mellon indicates that feeling connected to others, especially through physical touch, protects us from stress-induced sickness. We can hear that people feel better. We can hear that people are communicating more clearly when they have healthy touch. We can see the impact that it has on relationships. And they actually found that the more often people hugged, the less likely they were to get sick. We talked last week about the roots of touch in our own lives. I'd love you to ask yourself the question, how do you nurture yourself when you want more touch or when you feel overwhelmed by touch? What are the words you use? How do you set appropriate boundaries, which also means there's a consequence if someone doesn't follow the boundary? How do you set yourself up for success in getting your needs, wants, and desired met, even if that means keeping people away from you? I'll put a couple questions from the book, The Touch Crisis, Navigating the Tricky Terrain of Bringing Healthy Touch Back into Our Culture. I will put some of that in the box below so you can play with it yourself and let me know, what did you learn? What questions can I answer? And what do you need to know in order to really fulfill your own life and get what you need in your wants, needs, and desires met? So thanks for watching. Remember, you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable. Namaste.